Hey Frail, so now we're going to study uh, chemistry. So the chemistry that's affiliated with cell bio. So lucky for us, there's not much chemistry for us to learn compared to, you know, obviously chemistry class. Uh, the chemistry for cell bio, luckily for us, Stein hates chemistry, so she's not going to put a lot of that in the exam, but it is going to be helpful for you to know just so you have a good base for learning future things, okay? So, what we're basically going to start is from the chemistry of cell bio. So that's what this lecture will be called. Uh, let's make, can we make this thicker? The heck? Oh yeah, there you go. So, this is going to be chemistry. of cell bio. So this is a topic worth, worth learning about and uh, I know you hate chemistry but I'm gonna do my best to make it interesting so you don't fall asleep because I know you will. So let's begin. Um, so let's start. So chemistry basically equals biology. So in chemistry, what do you know about chemistry? There's atoms, there's molecules, there's a lot of building blocks and connections. But what you need to know for cell bio specifically is that when you alter the structure, you alter the function. The structure will always coincide with function. You need to remember that. You need to ingrain it in your brain that structure will always equal function. So what is your function here or not? How does your structure affect your function? These are all things that we will answer. So um, from the biggest things to cultures and civilizations, it narrows down to humans and organisms. Then humans narrow down to tissues. Tissue narrows down to cells. Cells narrow down to proteins, lipids, carbs, and nucleic acids. That narrows down to amino acids, carbon chains, sugars, and nucleotides. And that narrows down to atoms. And that narrows down to subatomic particles. This is all science, and none of the science is possible without the chemistry behind all of this. So it's very important for you to know what's going on in the cells and what's going on with chemistry as a whole. So the biggest thing that you need to understand is how important water is. 70%, remember this, 70, 70% of your body is made up of water. Your brain alone is made up of 70% water. Your lungs alone are made of lungs are made up of 90% water. Your blood is made up of 83% water. Most of these organs and you know your blood it contains so much water. So what is the chemistry of water? You need to understand the water to understand humans and living beings. So for human beings, 70% of us is just water. The other 30%, most of it, is proteins. The least is DNA. So 70% of us is water, 30% out of 13%, 30%, 15% is proteins, 1% is DNA. The rest is polysaccharides, RNA, phospholipids, ions, small molecules, etc. So how are we chemically different than the long living art organism? These all are very, very important questions for us to answer. So you need to understand the fundamental features of atoms to understand biology. So you need to understand the neutron, the electron, the proton. Um, so all of that. So there are four elements in the periodic table that are extremely important for cell bio very important for Stein, and we're going to get into detail of that. Hydrogen bonds. Carbon. Carbon is a basic form of life. Carbon is the basis of everything. You will always remember that carbon is the base. Hydrogen is good for hydrogen bonds. Those are in our, you know, in our, you know, in our amino acids and everything. Nitrogen. Nitrogen is in every protein. Every protein has amino acids. And oxygen, obviously we need oxygen for life, we need it to breathe. So 
there's there's two different kind of interactions. There's covalent bonds and non-covalent interactions. So covalent bonds, what are they? There's just simply when you share electrons. That's basically what it is. And non-covalent interactions are those different ones. So non-covalent is ionic, hydrophobic force, hydrogen bonding, van der Waals interactions. All of that falls into non-covalent interactions. And we're going to go into more detail in the next lecture for that. So now that we've talked about the basic, now we can start talking about bonds. So what we talked about the last slide was covalent bonds are the sharing of electrons and non-covalent bonds are where ionic bonds, hydrogen bonding, van der Waals forces, hydrophobic force, all of these things fall into non-covalent bonding. So how can we phys you know, visual visualize it in our minds what covalent and non-covalent is? How are we supposed to know, you know? So the easiest way for you to remember, Fredel, what covalent when covalent bonding comes in or when non-covalent bonding comes in is subunits make macromolecules through covalent bonding. So what do I mean by that? I mean, so sugars, amino acids, and nucleotides, they make proteins and RNA, obviously. So they make, they are the subunits and they make macromolecules. That's covalent bonding. But where does non-covalent bonding come in? Non-covalent bonding comes in when those things make even bigger structures. So, so when macromolecules make macro, macromolecular assemblies like ribosomes. So sugars and amino acids and nucleotides are molecules that are covalently attached together. But how these proteins are organized is through non-covalent bonding. So that's what you need to understand. Um, so what's the biggest thing? What's the purpose of covalent bonds? Obviously, covalent bonds store energy. They store energy. That's the number one thing that you need to know about covalent bonds is that they store energy. So what do I mean by that? So when two hydrogen atoms get too close together, you know, they obviously repel each other and that's van der Waal forces and we're going to go into more detail of that too. So what about polar versus non-polar and covalent bonds? What does that mean? What the heck is that all about? Polar covalent bonds means the unequal sharing. Some just think about polar, pig, piggy, greedy. Polar polar covalent bonds means unequal sharing. When some one when one, one element is taking more. So what's one that you can think of? So Covalent bonding is what makes the world go around. Think of yourself, your interactions with others, they're transient. Some are stronger than others. Some when you have multiple interactions, they add up. So that's what, co what, that's what non-covalent bonding is. Non-polar and non-polar. Polar covalent bonds means the unequal sharing. So after we've studied this, we're going to go into more detail about the other bonds in the next slide. Okay, so now that we've learned about covalent and non-covalent bonds, now we can start learning about what goes under non-covalent bonds. And the number one thing that goes under non-covalent bonds is, you guessed it, ionic bonds. So mostly, these happen between salts. And ionic bonds, you studied this in chemistry, but I think you might have forgotten a little bit. Ionic bonds is basically the electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged molecules. So it's, it's the interaction that happens between, say, Na plus and Cl minus. So this kind of interaction is ionic. So always remember that. It is the electrostatic interaction which is what's going on over here between oppositely charged molecules. So this is what's going on over here. 
So once you understand ionic bonds, you can now learn there's many different kinds, you know. There's covalent is sharing of electrons. So you need to so people ask and even you might be curious, what the hell is the difference between covalent bonds and ionic bonds? They all seem the same to me. I mean but you need to think of it this way. Covalent bonds means the sharing of electrons. They share their valence electrons. They share it. Covalent. Co means coexist. Valent. Valence. They share their electrons. Ionic means the transfer of electrons. Okay? So it's the electrostatic interaction between two oppositely charged molecules. It's the transfer of electrons. So once you know that, then you can start to move on from for, for more non-covalent bonds. So what's another non-covalent bond? Hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are generally weak, but they do have strength in numbers, and they are very important for water, okay? So on, the only thing you need to remember for hydrogen bonds is generally they are weak, but they are very, very strong if they are in numbers. And they're very important for wa water, obviously. So, what's another thing? Van der Waal interactions. That's another thing for non-covalent bonds. So, what is van der Waal? Van der Waal has to do with the distance between the nuclei of atoms that are close together. There is an optimal distance where the atoms will be attracted and repulsed equally. And this change constantly as the electrons fly around in orbit. So think of this way. If the closer I get to another human being, the further they're going to get away. So there's, a, there's an optimal di distance where they're still attracted, but there's still repulsion. So that's what van der Waal means. And the last but not least, and probably the easiest one, is hydrophobic force. So non-polar molecules will tend to stay together. They will push out the water. Polar likes polar. They like to share partial charges. Non-polar molecules, they want to minimize their interaction with water. So non-polar molecules don't want to, they don't want any interaction with water. This makes them hydrophobic. They don't want the water, you know? What makes it, what, what do you call it when they like the water? That means hydrophilic. So molecules, molecules can go either way, so, or both ways, high amphiphilic or amphipathic. So that's pretty much it for chemistry, and it's pretty easy, and I hope you understood it, and we're going to do more of these pretty soon.